Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a patch file that brute forces a login on another computer and how to defend yourself against it. Just a disclaimer that this video is for educational purposes only and you should not be using the things in this video on someone else without their permission. So anyway, let's get into it. So back in my skid days, aside from using Grabify on a daily basis, Something that I loved doing was making batch files. Now I would make menus where it's like, oh, which program do you want to open? It, it would have all my tools on there. I would make prank viruses. I would make all sorts of stuff. But anyway, one batch file, one tool that specifically stuck with me that I've been wanting to make a video about for quite a while now is the SMB Brute Forcer. Now you don't need to install Visual Studio. You don't need anything for this, right? All you need is Notepad and you can literally make a Brute Forcer with batch. Now, when it comes to batch file tools, this is like, the coolest but simplest one and i did come up with this one on my own it just came to me but someone probably you know okay whatever i'm not gonna take the credit for this. <laughs> but yeah don't be using this as a malicious tool it's a good exercise for when you're learning cybersecurity, when you're starting out it teaches you about the smb protocol the attacks how to defend yourself against it very educational so without further ado Let's get straight into it. Okay, so on your computer, you want to load up any text editor. I'm going to be using Notepad++ because, you know. What? So if you're on Notepad++ like me, head over to language, B, and then batch. And this is just going to highlight batch syntax. All right, so if you didn't know, you should probably know this if you watch my channel, but you start every single batch file with at echo off. You know, because if you open up command prompt, uh, you see the Microsoft Windows, the prompt, and you don't want to be seeing this while you're executing. So it just gets rid of the prompt so it's not in the way. All right, so we need three things while making this brute forcer. We need the IP address, so, you know, which host we're going to be connecting to. We need the username, so which usernames to run the attack on. And number three, we need the word list, which is going to have the list of the passwords that we're going to cycle through. Okay, so this is the variable name. You can call this whatever you want. And here's the prompt that we're going to show. So we're going to say enter your ip address and then whatever input it here is going to be saved an ip address so wait let's just test this out i'm gonna go echo ip here we go now let's run it enter ip address okay here so we know that whatever we put in here gets saved we know that everything's working fine let's keep going so just copy this twice and for the next one do user or whatever username and over here, we're going to input the username. And last one is going to be word list. Enter password list. All right, so I have my password list right here, passlist.txt. And it just has a bunch of, you know, passwords in it. And what we want our program to do is to loop through each one. So it's going to attempt this, then this, then this, then this, then this. So in batch, that's going to look like 4-f, a, and our variable name is word list. So in word list, we're going to do, you know, for now, let's just make sure that it works. So echo a. So what this should do is just line by line, show us all the passwords that are here to make sure that it's working. So control S to save, it should be blue and then enter password list. And yep, that just, that looped through all the passwords that are pretty quick. So we know that this is working. Okay. So now we're actually going to have to do the logins. So let me give you a quick lesson on how SMB works. So in command prompt, if we wanted to connect to another computer with SMB, we'd have to go net use slash slash and then the IP. So this could be, you know, whatever we want. I'm just going to do myself to specify the username. You want to go dash user and you type in the username and then whatever you type after username is going to be specified as the password. So if I go one, two, three, four, we're basically going to be logging into this IP with this username that's authenticated with this password. Username or password is incorrect. And if we had the correct username and password, it would let us in. So let's copy this command right here. So that whole net use thing, we're not going to do in this loop. We're actually going to make another. We're going to create a function to call it in. So right here, attempt this is going to be each attempt. And we're going to set the variable pass or you can set it as like, I don't know, attempt pass equals percentage A is going to call attempt. So over here, I'm going to paste the command. And for the IP, we're just going to go percentage IP percentage for the user same thing and for the password we set it as pass but now how do we check if we're actually logged in or not because we can just have the attempts going and it could log us in and it could keep going we don't know right so how we do know is by the error level environmental variable so let me show you how that works now we're going to open up command prompt again okay so what an environmental variable is is a variable that's just predefined on your computer um there are many examples like com spec this is where it's the location of your command prompt so see Windows System 32. Now I didn't define this variable. This is just an environmental variable that just pre-exists. So now there's a variable called error level. 
And this is very useful for what we were trying to do because it basically gives us the error code of the program when it exits. So when net use exits, when, you know, finishes executing, it basically exits and it leaves us the code. So if something went wrong, if the login was wrong, if the connection wasn't there, if, you know, some other error was happening, it, it would return something that's not zero. And that's how we know that something went wrong. So if we echo error level now, it's zero because, you know, there were no errors. Now let's try going net use, connect to myself again. This isn't a user on my system. Username or password incorrect. We'll go back to echo error level. And now we see that it's two and we can check this in the badge file. Now, if we connect successfully, so then the error level should be zero. So it's gonna try the attempt. And if error level is equal to two, actually wait, if error level is equal to zero. So if it went successfully, we're gonna go to success, which is a function that we're gonna make in a sec. And now if it isn't, we're just gonna type, then we're going to echo the attempt. We're gonna say that this, actually we should do the attempt before we should be, yeah. Echo attempt, yeah, display the attempt. Okay, so now the success function. I don't even know if these are called functions, so don't flame me in the comments, but that's what I call them, so whatever. So when we're successfully logged in, we of course wanna you know, let the user know we're gonna go echo password found. Wait, let me make this capital, you know, let me make this look good. Password found, and here we can just echo pass. And we're gonna pause, which is gonna give it a, you know, press any key to enter and then exit, which is gonna exit the program. Okay, let's look over the code, echo off, gets the IP, gets the username, gets the password, starts looping and calls attempt each time, goes for the attempt, displays it. If error level is zero, go to success. So if the login was successful, go to success. Um, if not, it's just gonna keep going. But if it does, it's gonna say password found, pause, exit. But let's say hypothetically the password isn't found, right? So after the for loop, we're just gonna say um, echo password not found, give them a little sad face, then pause, exit. Okay, so let's see how this runs. We're gonna run tool.bat and enter password list, passlist.txt. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. A few things are wrong here. Uh, number one, multiple connections to a server by the same resource are not allowed. Okay, so I'm already connected to myself. That's why it's giving us this error. Um, and how we get rid of this is that we have to disconnect from ourselves. And that command is putting in the IP, dash D, dash Y, and then it's gonna, you know, get rid of it. So we need to add that after the success message so people disconnect after so they don't get that issue. So we're just gonna put an IP here. Oh, what the f So we're just gonna put an IP here. And another problem is that it's displaying this in the first place. We don't want, you know, the output to be shown to the user. Like this looks messy. So what we would usually do, this doesn't fully hide the output because it doesn't hide the error. So we're gonna have to add a two and one. Now it's not going to show this output and we should also use it here. Okay, so let's try it again. Here's my password list. Boom. Password found. Password. So it works. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Now let's clean this up a little. I'm going to just make a couple of changes to make it look better. All right, so let me show you the final product. We got tool.bat. We got, oof, SMB brute force by Ebola, man. You know, just like the old days, I would always add this to the title. Enter IP address, username, password, and boom, that was quick. So yeah, I changed the title, changed the color, added an attempt thing. So, you know, you can see how many attempts went by. And I'll put this code on my GitHub. So, you know, if you wanna skid me, then you can. Our password is only nine passwords deep. Let's try putting it like deeper. Okay, this is the password. Let's move down like quite a bit. Yeah, this has to be like at least a few hundred. Uh, and let's see how fast it, you know, does this. Ooh, damn. Yeah, that's pretty quick. Oh, it's already at 100. Already at 200. Okay, damn, this is password found. Yeah, so we have like zero ping since we're testing this out on ourselves. Um, that's another reason why it's going by this fast. So let me actually test this out on my brother's laptop, see how well it works. <sighs> okay, so I just convinced my brother to change the administrator password. Um, and I'm gonna, you know, try this out on him now. With his permission, of course, you should only be doing this with other people's permission, as you know. Educational purposes only. Now, this is his IP. Username is also administrator. We're gonna be using the same password list. 
we see it's a little slower but um still going good uh by the way let me know what you think about the new webcam you know kind of feel like kai snat now it's uh it's wide angle wait hold up let me switch it real quick yeah like i feel like a streamer when it's like this you know you can just see my whole room you could have people in here on the second channel i'm probably gonna put up like maybe like an omegle video you know those look pretty fun all right there we go so attempt 949 we got the password so my brother's laptop is in the other room you know through a couple of walls and it took around like th how much 30 seconds to go through a thousand attempts which is actually pretty quick you can make it even quicker by like modifying the code and um you know make it look better and stuff this is like i literally just pieced this together in a few minutes to defend yourself against this you want to make sure unless you need it that you have smb disabled that you don't have network shares open so people you know can run brute force attacks also use complicated passwords so that there is basically no chance that they show up in any of these password lists so your account has a very low chance of getting cracked. And there's also a setting in Windows where you can limit the number of login attempts in an hour or for a certain time to prevent the brute forcing in the first place. So after, you know, a few attempts, it gets blocked and they cannot brute force it anymore. So yeah, that's how you prevent this to stay safe and uh, help others do that too. Anyway, the code will be in my GitHub if you want to modify it or just skid it. Let me know what you thought about this video and if you want like more uh you know coding tools follow along this type of stuff definitely let me know in the comments because i like making these like and sub to my channel if you enjoy the videos and i'll see you next time